All right, turn with you to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And um, we are busy with going through, studying through 2 Timothy verse for verse. Um, we are in verse 16 at, at this moment, and I've been talking to you for the last two weeks about um, all Scripture is profitable. And so this week, I'm going to talk to you about um, the, the plan of establishing the believer. That's what we're going to talk about today through the Pauline epistles. As we went through and as we studied through 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16, we saw that all Scripture is profitable. When he says all Scripture, he is not just talking about Romans through Philemon. He's talking about Genesis right through the book of Revelation. All of Scripture is profitable for us. There's doctrine in all of Scripture. Now we have to rightly divide the Word of God. Or are we going to get into trouble, right? But we have to rightly divide that because He's already told us that in chapter 2. All right? And so, but all Scripture is profitable for us, and it's profitable for doctrine, it's profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. Why? Well, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Now go back with me quickly, verse 14. Verse 14 says, or 2 Timothy 3, But continue thou in the things that thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And we showed you how scripture and the focus of scripture and all the scriptures of the prophets, etc., and the law was pointing to who? To Christ. And it's gonna, it, it points you to Christ. And so when Christ came and we have the finished work of the cross, it makes us, it brings us, makes us wise unto what? And salvation that is in Christ Jesus. You cannot have, I said last week, and a, and a week before I think I said it, you cannot have Paul's Romans through Philemon. You cannot have the revelation of the mystery. You cannot have the body of Christ if you don't have Genesis through Malachi, Matthew through John, and Acts. You cannot have that. You cannot have the fellowship of the mystery. You, it's an incomplete thing. Okay, so Paul brings a completion. He fulfills the scriptures, and what Paul's epistles is doing is bringing everything together, what needs to be being to, brought together. It's important that we understand that, okay? And so all scripture is profitable for us, and we need to give attention to all of scripture. Now we're learning something from, obviously there's some scripture that although all scripture is written for us, not all scripture is written to us, and not all Scripture is written about us. We understand that, right? But when we get to Romans through Philemon, we understand here is some specific Scriptures that has right, been written about us. And it's written to us. And it's for our edification and establishment, those specific Scriptures. Okay? And it's important that we, 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 we get that, you know. So in time past, when you and I were Gentiles, we were the other side of the middle wall of petition. The Scripture told us that we were without God and without Christ in the world. That's what the Scripture told us. It's, that's the only message it has for us, okay, in, in that sense. But now we understand God's Word right and divided. And so for the establishment of the believer... God has a plan in Romans through Philemon, our doctrine specifically about us and to us, which is going to edify us and establish us. And it's important that we get that. And that's why Paul says in verse 16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, Truly furnished unto all good works. So what is all Scripture going to do for us? It's going to truly furnish us unto what? All good works. It's going to make us perfect. It's going to perfect what is lacking in your and my life as a believer. And it's going to truly furnish us from, uh, as we, uh, from, from the heart through our 
even to the point that we physically are walking in light of what, and God is being on display because God is manifesting Himself in us. And by the way, none of you manifest the life of Christ. None of you manifest the life of Christ. He manifests His life through you. You get that? So maybe before you go like, oh, you're saying I'm not manifesting like, no, I'm not saying. He's doing the work. It's His work. It's Him working in us that believes. Okay? Not you. Okay? What you, what you manifest is just the work of the flesh. If, if that's what you think you're doing. Okay? So, it's Christ in us. Okay? And so, the plan of establishing the believer. Go with me to the book, if you will, of Romans. Romans, uh, Romans chapter 16 is the verse that we want to get to this morning. Romans chapter 16. And... Um, Get Romans 16 there and hold it, and I just want to start off in Romans as I do this. I like to put these two together, and um, go to Romans chapter 1 as well. Romans chapter 1 as well. Romans chapter 1 as well. Gesundheit. Gesundheit. All right. Are you doing all right there at the back? Yeah, are you playing musical chairs or what is it? What's going on there? Okay. All right, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verse 11. Verse 11. Paul's writing to the Romans and he says, For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end you may be established. So his desire is to impart unto the church of Rome a spiritual gift. So that at the end, as he's, as he's giving this to them, it will get them to be what? Established. There is some doctrine, there is some instruction from God's Word that they need to be established. Okay? Now, verse 12, then he's going to tell you what it is. He says, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. So he says, so the end, what I want you to be established is because I want us to have a mutual faith. I know some things that you guys don't know yet. And for this reason, I want to impart this to you so that you and I can be on the same page and the same understanding, the mutual faith of both you and me at the end. So you'll be established. Now, look at verse, um, verse 13. says, Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but was led hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, as even as among other Gentiles. So Paul's already having the fruit that we're going to see now. He's going to give to them. He's led hitherto. What he's saying, led hitherto, is the writing of this epistle. He's writing them this epistle, the doctrine, because he can't get to them. So he's going to give them this information. This information, by the way, other Gentiles already got. So that's why he doesn't have to write all this information when he writes the book of Thessalonians, because they already got this information. He doesn't have to write it when he gets to the book of Ephesians, because they already got it, because he was there. He spent time there. Do you get what I'm saying? So he wants him to be established. Now go with me to 16. Go with me to 16 as he's closing off this book. Chapter 16, and um, verse 24. Chapter 16 and verse 24, we're talking about the plan of establishing the believer. It says, now to him, uh, verse 24 says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Then he gives us this last bit here in verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you. Who's him? Now to him that is of power to establish you. Who's him? Is it God or is it Christ? Let's read further. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. He's going to establish you according to my gospel. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the what? Mystery. Which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest. And by the scriptures of the prophets, 
according to the commandment of the everlasting God, hath made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. So the one that establishes us is the one that is faithful, which is God. He does that through Christ. He does that by Christ. You understand what I'm saying? And so what he's going to do, there's three things that we're going to see in this passage that he's going to do. He says, the establishment of God, the way that God's going to establish you, is according to the following things. My gospel, number one. The gospel that Paul is preaching. Number two is the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the what? Mystery. And there's the third thing there. He says, and verse, verse 6, 26 says, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God. So what is ultimately the glory of God's grace is going to be the, prof- the scriptures of the prophets, etc. And we're going to see how that comes together now, okay? If, you know, think about that for a second, okay? Verse 27 is key. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Okay? It's the ultimate glory, okay, that we're going to follow. So God has given us in His Word, Paul talks about, you've, in, in chapter 6 of the book of Romans, he says, you've obeyed that form of doctrine. You believe this message that has been preached to you of the gospel of God's grace. The finished work of the cross. Okay? Go with me. Keep your hand in Romans 16 because we're not quite done there. But go with me to first, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And verse 13. Everybody following me so far? Jeanette, are you following me? I'm sure you have, because your face tells me you've got a question. That's why I ask you, are you with us? (laughs) Second Timothy, um, what did I say? Chapter 1, verse 13. Paul is telling Timothy, and we've gone through this passage, obviously, and we taught some of that. In in verse 13, he says, Hold fast the form of sound words. So God has a form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, what I am teaching, there's a form of sound words. The word form, you hear me say this over and over, the word form means what? I, I, I use it as a mold, you know. We always talk about tarred building boats and stuff, and there's a mold, there's a form. And if he wants that b- boat to be built, you pour in the, you know, the gel and, your, and your, your fiberglass and all this and your stringers and what have you. You build in that form, you build the boat that you want, okay? And once you finish building that and everything is cured and what have you, you, you turn it out and you take it out. You take that mold, that out of that mold you take this boat that is exactly what you desired to be formed. So Paul has a form of sound words that God has given to him to give to us the body of Christ that's going to bring God's desired result out. But you've got to obey those form of sound words. You've got to see those form of sound words because that's what's giving us our doctrine for what God's purpose and intent is for us. You understand? And so the Pauline epistles is laid out For the establishing of the believer, it's not chronologically written. It's not written in a chronological uh, 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 sequence. It's written in a doctrinal sequence for the establishing of the believer. Okay? That's what I want to say, because otherwise you'll have Galatians and Thessalonians being written first. Okay? But Thessalonians appears a little bit later on there, Okay? It has to do with God's design in the doctrine that he's delivering. This information that Paul is preaching to the Romans is not the first time that people heard this. He's already told other Gentiles about us. The Romans are only learning it now. You understand what I'm saying? So Romans chapter 16, he says, Now to him there is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the what? Mystery which was kept secret since the world began. We know about that. But now, now in this dispensation of God's grace, is made manifest, and by the Scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. 
to God only be to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Okay? Paul is not excluding, as he ends Romans here, he's not excluding the rest of scriptures. He's including them for your and my establishment. Again, you cannot be established if you you cannot be established if you only know the mystery. If you don't know God's counsel and purpose, you can't have that. You can't have an establishment for the believer today without the counsel of God. All the counsel of God. How He's made it possible. Because how does Christ come? He starts with the seed of the woman. He comes from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's all these promises and all these things pointing to Christ so that God ultimately can bring all things together in Christ. Things in heaven and things where? On earth. It's a whole design. We need to see the picture. And so when Paul says, I was preaching to you the whole counsel of God, all the counsel of God, he's meaning, I'm not just preaching you Romans through Philemon, I'm preaching you every, I'm giving you everything in light of what's going on. And the more you and I know what's going on as a whole of Scripture, the better our establishment becomes because we know where we, who we are and where we fit in. And we have to get into those Scriptures and understand some of the things that's going on. Now anyway... So in Paul's epistles, he's laying out the issue of that form of sound words. First of all, Paul's my gospel. Okay? First of all, Paul's my gospel. Can you guys see all that? Is that the small? My gospel. We're talking about, and the gospel that Paul is preaching is the finished work of what? Of the cross, of Christ. The finished work is done on the cross. He died on the cross, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The work of the cross is not just him dying, it's his burial and his what? His resurrection for us. And Paul talks about then the issue with the cross and the gospel, the foundational doctrine that you and I need is the finished work of the cross. And it's an issue of faith. The just shall live by what? Faith. It's important that we understand it. It's, it's the foundation that has been laid. That Paul is laying for the church, the body of Christ. Okay, it, it's important that we get that. It's, it's what he says, according to, it's your establishment is going according to my gospel, Romans 16. It's the cross. It's what he's preaching concerning the cross. That's a foundation that's been laid. Okay, it's important that we understand that. It's our grace orientation. It's like your orientation to, to get into where you're going to be before you know you're the body of Christ, before you know that Jesus Christ is the head of, your body, of this body and your purpose in the heavens, you've got to be orientated to concerning the finished work of the cross. You, you hear me? Okay. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter three. Paul is speaking to the church at Corinth. And verse nine he says, in verse nine, Paul and those that's with him writing this. In first Corinthians chapter three, verse nine he says, For we are laborers together with God. Ye, who's ye? The body of Christ. That's you and I. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. You're the field. You're the edifice that God is putting together. Okay? We are laborers together with God, says Paul. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Verse 10 says, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. So who's the master builder in this specific edifice that is now busy me built? It's Paul, right? The architect is who? God. Paul is just, a, he's, he's just a, the foreman or the, the guy that's do, you know, delivering the goods. Okay. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is who? Jesus Christ. Now, if any man built upon this, etc., 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 we're not going to get into that. Paul is saying, as the master builder, he's laying the foundation. And by the way, this foundation is not just, this foundation is not just for the body of Christ. 
It's a foundation for all of God's purpose because without this foundation, which is Jesus Christ, God's ultimate purpose for His glorification cannot be fulfilled for things in heaven and things on earth. That has to be the same foundation, which is Jesus Christ. You get, you, you at least hear what I'm saying? Okay. It's important to begin. So Paul lays the foundation. For our grace orientation, we have the issues of this foundation that has been laid. It's Paul's my gospel. With, with, without Paul's gospel, you don't, under, you don't understand who you are as the body of Christ. You don't know who you are as the body of Christ. You can learn about your identification, but you're still not learning about the one body that, whose head is Christ. You only learn that when? In Ephesians, for God's purpose in the what? In the heavens, ultimately. Okay? You with me? Okay, I know it's a lot, but think about that. So, the way that we, and the issue here in, in Paul's My Gospel is the issue of faith. It's the issue of faith. Go with me to Romans, back to Romans, if you will. And chapter 1. I'm just going to read you a few verses. I'm not going to expound on them too much, but it's important to understand that in your grace orientation, in the, in the preaching of my gospel, the cross, it's important that faith is the issue with God. It's always been the issue with God. Robert um, eloquently talked about that this morning. Okay, The issue is always faith. Romans 1 verse 17 says, um, For therein is... Well, let's go read 16 too, because it's not too good a verse to leave out. Oh, let's read 15 too. And for... Oh, no, no, just a, you know, so... You know how it is. Verse 16. Yeah, let's verse 1. <laughs> Verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the what? To the Greek. Verse 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it's written, the just shall live by what? Faith. He's quoting this from Habakkuk, the just shall live by what? Faith. The issue with God has always been what? Faith. And it's the issue here in the book of Romans. The problem is with the nation of Israel, and the, uh, the problem with the Gentiles and the nations is they didn't receive God by faith. That's why God gave them up. In chapter 3, chapter 3, if you will, verse 27. Verse 27 of chapter 3 of Romans. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of what? Faith. Therefore we conclude that the man is justified by faith without the deeds of the what? Law. So Paul is laying clearly out that his gospel is the issue is faith. Is, the God, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not of, of also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the un uncircumcision through faith. Do we may then avoid the law without faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. We've come to the conclusion there's nothing wrong with the law. The issue with God is always faith. Whether it's going to be Israel or the body of Christ, it's always going to be faith. Okay? And establishment of that is, 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 is important that we understand faith. In 1 Corinthians 16, 13, I'm not going to go there right now because of time. In 1 Corinthians 16, 13, he says, Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Stand fast in the faith. The issue is faith. Galatians. Now go with me to Galatians, if you will. Galatians chapter 2. We're busy with the foundation that God is in this edifice, and you'll see what I'm going to with this. In Galatians chapter 2. Verse 16, knowing the problem, we're going to see later on the problem with the Galatians, obviously going back to the law. Verse 16 says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. What justifies you and I is not your faith. What justifies you and I is the faith of Christ. That's what's purchased our salvation. The faith of Christ, His work. But, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. So again, you believe in Jesus. Why? So that you can be justified by His faith, the faith of Christ, His finished work. 
and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be what? Justified. What is the issue with God? The just shall live by what? Faith. What is the issue with the gospel? Am I Paul's my gospel? Faith. That's always been the issue. And so Paul lays that basic foundation out. Chapter 3 verse 26 says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. We believe the gospel. We have to believe Paul's my gospel. You don't believe Paul's my gospel, you cannot be justified by the faith of Christ. You've got to believe Paul's my gospel. It's important that we understand that. Then... Galatia, uh, uh, then he says in, in Romans chapter 16, establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the what? Mystery. Now we go from the cross to the church. To the church. His purpose with the church. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. You hear revelation of the mystery the first time in Romans 16, 25. You don't read about it before that. You read it in 1620, at the end of Romans. Okay? At the end of Romans, we read that. The revela and now, does that mean that Romans chapter 1 through 16 is not the revelation of Jesus Christ, is the preaching of Jesus? No, of course it is part of that. He can't, you know, it's the foundation. It's Paul's my gospel. Okay, and Paul's my gospel is according to the preaching of Jesus Christ. But he's using the term revelation of the mystery, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, the first time in the end of Romans chapter 16. Now he's moving on to more advanced doctrine concerning the church, who you and I now are a part of. A part of Israel. You and I are the body of Christ. We are the church. And the issue that we're going to find here in the church is, is the love. That's because when you know the love of God, and you understand the love of God, you understand His purpose and what He's doing. When you see His purpose, you see His ultimate goal that He's doing through whatever He's doing, you see how it's been motivated by His love, and you understand that love, you now as the church starts getting, you start getting established. You start getting the fullness of God as the church. But that comes from the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the what? Mystery, which is distinct from preaching Jesus Christ according to prophecy. This was kept secret since the world began. Prophecy was not kept secret. It was made known since the world began. So what we have now is the revelation of the mystery. It's, it's the church. The goal of God's grace is to form a body called the body of Christ with Jesus Christ as the head of that body for the intent to reclaim His authority with His Son and the body of His Son in the heavenly places where you and I are going to go for full up in the heavenly places. That's where we're going to go. And that's where we now find the preaching of the, the advanced doctrine concerning... We, we, but we have to have the foundation of my gospel first. Then move on to this advanced ultimate purpose of the goal of God's grace. We move on to that. And then we preach the scriptures of the prophets. Now we're going to talk about the coming hope. We have the cross, we have the church, and now we have the coming of the Lord. To fulfill his, to his, for his ultimate glorification. And we get that through the scriptures of the prophets, obviously, and Paul's, without, and Paul's, because he's already included the preaching of Jesus Christ according to Revelation of the Mystery, Romans through Philemon, that's included in there. And so it's the glory of God's grace. And the issue there, if the issue with the cross was faith, and the issue with the church, we didn't even go through the love. Let's go back to the, to the love there. I wanted to get you some verses concerning the love that we need to comprehend. Faith is the issue of the foundation. Now, faith is always the issue of the other stuff too. But faith is the issue of our foundation, my gospel. Love is the motivator, is the motivator for us to comprehend what God is doing. It's love. It's God's love. And by the way, we are taught of God to love. Paul doesn't need to tell us to love. 
Because we are taught of God to love one another. How? Because we see the love of God and what He's done for us. You know? You can't get saved without understanding... Not what, I'm going to be careful how I say this now because people are going to misquote me. You've got you to understand that God loved you and sent His Son to die in your place. Ms. Berner wrote, you, you don't have to believe that He loved you to get saved. You have to believe that He, he paid the price for you. But you comprehend once you get saved, you start learning about, wow, what love. And the more and more we get renewed in the spirit of our minds, the more and more we start comprehending the love of Christ. The more and more we understand the love of God. And the more we understand it, the more we are filled with the fullness of God. Because ultimately we see Him glorified. And we see our place in, in light of that ultimate glorification. But it's the love that motivates us for that. It's the love of Christ. It's the love of God that motivates us for that. Go with me to Ephesians. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 3. Paul is praying for them to be strengthened by might, by his spirit in the inner man. You've heard me use those verses a few times. But Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17. As they are strengthened by the spirit in their inner man, as they're renewed in the spirit of their mind and strengthened, verse 17 says, his prayer for them is that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That's the only way that Christ dwells in our hearts is by faith. My gospel. You get that? That ye being rooted and grounded in what? Love. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know, by the way, that length, breadth, depth, and height is the fullness of Christ's riches, man. That he, uh, 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 verse 19 says, and to know the love of Christ. Do you think these believers at Ephesus knew something about the love of Christ? Of course they do. But he's praying for them. To be rooted and grounded in that love. Verse 19, And to know the love of Christ, that passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of what? What is the motivator for your filled with the fullness of God? It's to know the love of Christ. But to do that, you need to, Christ needs to dwell in your hearts by faith. Then you, you, you get rooted and grounded in what? In His love. And that's your motivator. It's the love of Christ. That was what God's motivator to do what He's doing. It's His love. Chapter 4 in Ephesians. Chapter 4 in Ephesians. Verse 1 and 2. I therefore the prison of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Walk worthy, believers, of the vocation wherewith you are called. God is writing this to us right here, right today, right this moment. He's writing to you, Alyssa. He's writing to you, Drew. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, Alyssa, Drew, and everybody else, that you walk worthy as the members of the body of Christ, that you walk worthy of your vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in what? Oh, man, forbearing one another in love is tough sometimes, isn't it? But if we fold with the fullness of God and comprehend that love that He has for us, can we walk worthy of that vocation? Can we forbear one another in love? Because, the, you know, it's the only way that God forbears us is because of His love. And it was displayed. His love was displayed on the cross. In Paul's My Gospel. Chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in what? Love. 
as Christ also loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice of God for a sweet smelling savor. God accepted that sacrifice of his son. And that, being, that sacrifice was a sacrifice of love. You and I need to walk in love just as Christ has loved us. What's motivating you and I as believers? Philippians 1 verse 9 says, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Can you see how the issue with the church, the body of Christ, you know why there's not unity? Because the love of God is not abounding more and more in all judgment and knowledge. Faith is the issue that we need to understand that Christ may dwell in our hearts, but for our rooting and our build-up is the love, to comprehend the love of God and the love of Christ. It's the motivating factor there, if you will. But then we come to the, you know, where we understand the mystery. There's so much to be said about the mystery. We can read Romans chapter 3. There's so many passages that we can do. But ultimately, so we have the gospel. We have the cross, the issue of faith. We have the church, the issue of love. Now we have the, the coming of the Lord. And what is that? If, if, if the issue with my gospel is faith, and the issue with the church, the body of Christ, is the motivator is love, what is it going to be with the coming? Hope. Hope. The hope that is laid up for us in heaven. We have a sure hope. We have a blessed hope. Because we're looking for Christ to come and take us. Now we understand by the finished work of Christ, you and I are saved by His death, His burial, and His resurrection. God loved us. He died. His Son died for us, paid for my sin, so that I can be justified. And now if I believe the gospel, I place my faith in the faith of Christ, God takes me from being dead in trespasses and sins, places me into, into His Christ, because of, I place my faith in the faith of Christ, what He's done for me. Now I get established knowing His love that He has for me as, as a member of the body of Christ and what our motivator is, and as get filled with the fullness of God, the last thing that I'm waiting for is what? The ultimate capstone and the ultimate thing that finishes this thing off, this edifice off, is my glorification. Not just mine, but the nation of Israel also have a hope, the true Israel of God. And so ultimately is the hope is God's glory, His purpose, why He does everything that He's done, is to bring us into that place of the glory of God's grace. Things that He's going to do in heaven and earth for us. The hope. First, you know, we, we read that, let's read that passage again. I, I didn't read it this morning, but I quoted it. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sought are not even as others which have no what? No hope. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us an everlasting consolation and good hope through what? Through grace. A good hope. He's given that to us. Faith, hope, and what? Love. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. We have a hope. And so ultimately we see, we see this edifice that God is putting up for the establishing of the believer. And it's for the glory of His grace. Go back with me to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, if you will. Verse 25 and 26 and 27. Now to him, that's Romans 16, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the, what? Mystery, which was kept secret since the world, but now is made manifest. So he said, what's now made manifest? The mystery. And 
by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, had made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. God ultimately is going to, what He ultimately wants to do is to bring all things together in who? In Christ. Things in heaven and things where? On earth. A couple of passages in closing here this morning. You, you Go with me to Colossians 1 and Ephesians 1. Colossians 1 and Ephesians 1. You see, for our establishment, the more and more we understand the ultimate purpose of God, how He's putting this all together, the form of sound words that He has placed for our edification. Oh man, when you see yourself in the ultimate picture of what God is doing, it's got to motivate you to live by faith, established in love, with a hope. Colossians 1, verse 19 says, For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell, and having made known through the blood of His cross, by Him, to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things where. What is God going to bring together by finished work of Christ? Reconcile to himself. Things in heaven. And who's the agent by which he's going to reconcile things? It's obviously Christ. But who is attached to Christ as his body in the heavenly places by which he's going to reclaim his authority in the heavenly places to reconcile it to himself is who? It's us. Who's it going to be for the nation of Israel? Oh, who's it going to be for me on the earth? <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Not the, it's the nation of Israel. Remember, they came out of Egypt as a nation. God gives birth to them. They come wandering through the wilderness for 40 years. God's judging them. He's getting into the land, and he says, Now eradicate everything. And course, my, this is my seed of authority. You kill everything in this land, man, woman, and children, you, you clean it out. And the nation of Israel goes into that land that God promised. They saw the fruit of what God has promised them. And you know what they did? They didn't do what God told them to do. And, and ended up making fornicating with the nations of the Moabites and, and, and the women of the Moabites and fornicating with these nations. And that is. Because who has the seed of authority in that land? Satan. And so God has formed this nation so that he can claim that authority back and put his son on that throne with his people, the nation of Israel, to, to, to take control of the earth and reconcile it to himself. And by the way, as he's doing that, it's going to take a thousand years as he's of peace on the earth to ultimately cleanse the earth before we see a never heaven a new heaven and earth because after a thousand Satan has been bounded and kicked out of heaven in the middle of the 70, 70th week of Daniel he gets to the bottomless pit he's there for a thousand years and after a thousand years he gets released and you know what's the first thing when he gets to you think he would have learned a lesson by now after a thousand years in the bottomless pit he comes out and he deceives some of those nations that has gone into the kingdom to stand up against Christ and his city and God ultimately judges them and kills a whole lot of them. And he has the white throne judgment and he sends them all to the eternal lake of fire. And then we see a new heaven and a new earth. And the very purpose God had in Genesis 1 verse 1, God fulfills and brings it all together. All hinged on one single event. It's the finished work of the cross. For God be glory forever and ever. Amen. Only glory for God forever and ever. Amen. Is when God has ultimately bring, brought all this together. You and I are part and parcel of that. So next week when we come back, we're going to go further now and look on what is the doctrine in which books are the doctrine, which books are the reproof, which books are the correction, and what is there for our instruction and righteousness as we go th further through chapter verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 3 what a mighty God we serve now there used to be a song we sang years ago 
what am I, what, I, I'm not going to even try singing, but you know, what a mighty God we serve, and I know it's like, it was some denominational song we serve, what a mighty God, we, yeah, anyway, so, but, but yeah, that's what he's doing, but you, the more we understand, the Paul in epistles is set up for us to understand this edifice, our establishment, it's there for us, as we look at it in light of that, oh man, it's just going to establish us more and more. Father, we thank you for your grace. We know we don't deserve this. Why are we thankful for the great love wherewith you loved us? We thank you for the faith of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thankful for the hope that you have laid up for us in heaven, that we as the body of Christ, rooted and grounded in love, that we can look to that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, that we can look by faith to that. Thankful that we have this hope. Fathers, we know that this world can offer us absolute no hope. And so we want to set our affection on those things that you've given us and to focus on. And we're thankful that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that it's nothing that can separate us from your love. We're thankful that your word declares that you are for us. If God, if your word declares if God, if you are for us, who can be against us? We have your Son making intercession for us, and we have the Spirit, your, the, 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 the Holy Ghost, making intercession with, for us with prayers that cannot be uttered, and according to your will, according to your word. We're so blessed to know these things and understand these things, and we pray that we will be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we might walk worthy unto all pleasing. As we pray these things by Christ with thanksgiving. Amen.